Welcome to my lecture online. Now that we've seen some of the theory when it comes to sample and sample means and sample distributions, let's do some examples. Let's start with a simple example. In this particular case, we're dealing with a population. Notice that the members of the population, the elements in the population can be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. There's multiples of each. Notice that the mean or the average in the population is equal to 4. Now, what do we do in order to come up with a distribution of the sample means? Well, first of all, we need to understand what the sample size is. In this case, the sample size is 2. Now, how many samples are we going to take? Well, that is not an issue at this point. What we can do, however, is we can look at all the possible different kinds of samples that we could draw from that. And it turns out there's 25 different types of samples or 25 different possibilities. Notice that we've drawn all or written on the board all 25 possibilities. We draw two numbers at random. They could both be 0, 1 could be 0 and a 2, a 0 and a 4, a 0 and a 6, a 0 and 8, or it could be 2 and 0, 2 and 2, 2 and 4 and so forth. We grab one, we grab the other, and those are the 25 possibilities based upon this population. Since there's an equal number of each number in the population, the probability of drawing any one of those 25 different possibilities is equal to one another. The possibility of drawing any one of them is 1 out of 25 or 0 0.04. Then we have to calculate the mean of each sample. So we add the two together and divide by 2. So that's the average or the mean of the first sample, the average of the second sample, the average of the third, and so forth. So we end up with 25 averages or 25 means of the 25 possible samples. Then we calculate the probability that we'll get one of those means. So the probability of getting zero for the average by grabbing two at random. Again, they have to be grabbed at random. Well, the probability is 0 0.04. There's only one out of 25 possibilities that happening. The, pro the probability of getting an average of 1 is 0 0.08. The probability of getting an average of 2 is 0 0.12 and so forth. Now, the next thing we need to do is draw the histogram. And when we draw the histogram, you can see we have that nice normal distribution. Notice that the, the one in the middle that has the highest probability ends up being 4. So we can see here that the average or the mean of the means of the samples ends up being equal to 4. And notice that that's equal to the average of the mean of the population. Now, because of the symmetry, you can see that's exactly 4, but we're going to show you later how we can actually calculate it in case we have to calculate it if it's not quite as obvious when we're dealing with more realistic numbers rather than this perfect set of numbers to deal with. But at least with the perfect set of numbers, we can easily follow the trend here, see how it's done. So first of all, we identify the sample size. We identify the number of samples. In this case, we're looking at all the possible samples that we could draw from this particular population. Of course, in the real world, we just pick a number and we just grab a certain number in each case. We then calculate the mean of each sample. Then we calculate the probability of having that particular mean. Then we draw a histogram of the probabilities of getting each one of those averages or each one of those means. Notice it's a nice normal distribution. And we can clearly pick out that the mean of the distribution of the means is equal to 4, which happens to be the same as the average of the mean of the population. So that's one important piece of information we can get out of sampling from a total population. We sample and we get the average or the mean of the distribution of the means of the samples. And that is how it's done.